Hey guys, it's Chad from the Teach Better team, and I am here with the one, the only, the amazing Maurice Martin. Maurice, how are you doing tonight? I am awesome, Chad. Thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, so Maurice, whether you guys were there or not, hopefully you were because it was amazing, just hosted an awesome mastery chat. And if I'm not mistaken, Maurice, was this your first mastery chat or first Twitter chat altogether? It was. It so, was it was my first Twitter chat, so I kind of felt like no one would be on it. <laughs> yeah. The pleasant surprise, that was incredible, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, but it was <laughs> packed, man, and um, everyone was just pouring their hearts out. They were reflecting. They were just, oh, my gosh, mm -hmm. the questions were perfect. Yeah. I honestly uh, – you did a great job with the questions. We're going to get into a couple of them, okay? But um, one of the things I loved about sure. tonight's chat is I feel like I've been sitting on a therapy couch but also like reflecting on my mm -hmm. own existence in the world all at the same time. Um, so it was yes. like – I was yes. like growing and sort of like reflecting and uh, like meditating on my own at the same time. It was like the perfect mm -hmm. mix. Mm -hmm. So it was absolutely awesome. A bunch of people are joining us. Awesome. Dave Schmidow, Adam Kados, Becky Tal. Um, Barn, Livia Chan, a bunch of them were actually in the chat, but we have people coming in from Twitter mm -hmm. and everywhere else. So um, how do you feel? How do you feel like the chat went? Um, what are some standout moments? Maybe like at least your, your, your top moment of the chat from the night? Sure, absolutely. So what you said was what I was hoping people would get out of the experience, right? That with everything going on, because it's not just the racial issues, it's COVID-19 and people out of school, there is just life happening. And so what I wanted to see is where um, are people really working on themselves? Are you just kind of taking a mental beating every day? Or are you proactively growing and healing and trying to evolve as a person? Um, I would say just overall, what I loved was a lot of people who acknowledged no, today I'm not where I want to be, but I'm working on it. Um, uh, somebody uh, who said, to me, she said, I told her, I said, hey, great job. I'm proud of you for, for, for growing. And she said, well, I don't feel like I'm doing a very good job. There's so much I didn't know. No, that's the point. The great job is the process. Right. <laughs> I love it, man. The, the great job. The great job is that you're willing to get in there and find out what you don't know so that you can mature and develop. That's that's the great job. Yeah. And uh, people are echoing this in the chat right now. Dave Schmino says, you know, better, better mm -hmm. today than you were yesterday, better tomorrow than today. I mean, that's the teach better mindset through and through. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think that oh, goes yeah. so much deeper in the context that you're talking about, right? Like it's okay mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. not know what you don't know, right? As long mm -hmm. as you're, you're, you're fighting and you're becoming better and knowing more than you did yesterday. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I, it, yeah, it is absolutely, uh, it was just so cool to see all of that, all of that reflection. Um, one of the one of the biggest mm -hmm. things, um, one of the questions I do want to bring up is your 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 colorblind question. So you just had this mm -hmm. viral YouTube video with an amazing. I'm not going to have you do the whole thing, obviously, but um, you have an amazing <laughs> take on sort of colorblindness. And, and one of the my mm -hmm. favorite lines, and please forgive me if I butcher this a little bit, was that. Um, are you colorblind or are your eyes just closed? I think it was something, mm. something, it's pretty close to that. Is that right? Okay. I just, <laughs> you got it right. You got it yeah. right. <laughs> like stuck with me, man. I was like, because like saying you mm. don't see this is just being ignorant to the way the world actually is. And so like, yeah. I was just thinking about that, reading this question. Um, um, so I'd like for you to go into that like just a little bit. So the question was, sorry, I'm just pulling it up real quick. There are many dangers in being colorblind to race. As educators, it's important to be cognizant of cultural differences and challenges. So you asked our community, what are you doing to better understand um, your students, your learners, your kids who have different backgrounds, races, and cultures that they're bringing into your classroom? So like, what was your thought behind that? And, and were you happy with the response, I guess, would be my question. Good question. Good question. So, you know, the first part is there are so many people when they say that they're colorblind, it's actually a very well-intentioned statement. 
What they're yeah. trying to say is, I just see people. I just love people. I give my best to people. And so it's important for us to understand that sometimes the best intentions are not actually the best thing for the kids or the best thing for relationships. And so this is a lot of people I saw, um, they, I saw at least three people said that was a gut punch. <laughs> and so yeah. it's the moment where you realize, oh gosh, I have been trying so hard to do the right thing. And maybe the right thing was right for me, but not right for the person I was going towards, right? So what I wanted to point out in that question was, First of all, I wanted everybody to know being colorblind is not the best thing. Um, to be color aware, who it is that's in front of you, what is different about their life that could pose either challenges in the classroom, challenges when they leave the classroom, what are the, the cultural dynamics they walk into when they go home, how do they view success versus failure, um, how are they set up to fail differently or set up to succeed differently. There are so many dynamics that go into these things. And, and, it, and it's it really, this goes beyond race, if we're being honest. Um, in a classroom, yeah. the socioeconomic status of your different students, depending on where you are, you can be in the middle of just complete opposites, right? Yeah. And 100%. knowing who you're in front of, you can't just say it is the same. No, some, some right. kids have more trauma, more abuse, more struggle. And so the answers that I saw were actually great. I saw a lot of people saying, I didn't realize this was a problem, but recently it was branching and here's how I'm working on it. So it seemed like me saying it wasn't the first time they've heard it. That's a good thing. That's a start. It means people are talking and there's more conversations. Um, Chad, if I'm being honest, I give so much credit to these issues to COVID-19. I mean, <laughs> the reality is that it's like life hit pause. Silver right? linings. And so everybody... <laughs> You're right. Normally be hustle and bustle and end of the school year and graduation and all these things. And everybody was like, yo, I'm sitting at home. And in yeah. that climate, when some of the things that have happened before happened again, suddenly. Yeah, I mean, we absolutely had the time to reflect. So, so much awesomeness mm -hmm. just happened that I'm going to try to kind of like re just bullet point it real quick. So like the first thing mm -hmm. just about, you know, colorblindness for sure. Like I remember even growing up, like hearing people say that, like it was just like the epitome of moral, like high ground, right? Like, oh, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. see. And then, but like, but you're literally devaluing the existence and the, what makes a person who they are. Right. And for us to do that mm -hmm. for our students is such a disservice to them. Well, one of the most common things I tell teachers is you, your job is to teach the kids you have, not the ones down the street, mm. not the ones down the road, not the wow. ones that you had in your own school, right? So if you want to sit right. here and complain about so-and-so's this or that, or I can't believe they act this way or that way, like those are the kids you have. Those are the kids you have to teach. Mm -hmm. So right. um, I, I think that goes hand in hand. You have to know your students to teach them because kids don't learn from people mm -hmm. they don't like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like or who, don't, or who um, don't understand them, or who don't 100%. understand them. Yeah. So if you don't know who you're talking to, or who you're teaching, or who you're connecting with, how are you ever meant mm -hmm. to make that connection? That's absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely true. And I think some of that reflection definitely came out in the chat tonight. So I'm so glad you kind of brought that to the surface. Yeah. Um, there was one, there was mm -hmm. one comment that, that, I, that I'm thinking about, and I don't know if you saw it, but there was someone who grew up as a white person, as the minority in a black community. And they oh, said I saw that it. they, I saw it. Yeah, I did. It, and it was like this, I was, I, I had commented back to her. I said, like, thank you for being so transparent and reflective about this. Yes. Like, this is a really unique yes. perspective, right? Um, and it was just really, like, awe-inspiring that, like, wow, the fact that you could, first of all, say that on a national Twitter chat. Like, that's pretty cool. Right. Like, the fact that you're going to admit yes. this, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, but second of all, the fact that you're able to acknowledge that now and then move forward, right? And, and I think... And, that, and you know, I would... Ahead. And I would even change one word because I don't think it was even think something to admit. I think it was just something sure. to acknowledge. And the only reason I change, I use a different word is because that's just her reality. 
she just looked around and everybody had dark skin and it was life. And so now being in the classroom, she has to reapproach it. So it's not something to apologize about. It's just something to grow from and learn from. And I, I felt like, and this is one thing I do want to say, Chad, I felt like there are a lot of people right now who are just kind of, I don't want to say they're having a pity, those wouldn't but they're almost feeling like, oh my God, I feel so bad, right? That yeah, was why I asked yeah. the question about being heavy. Well, it doesn't do a whole lot of good to beat yourself up about what you haven't done before. Sure. Just take all that energy and figure out what you can do now. That's the healthiest thing you can do. You don't have to, you don't have to have a pity party or a guilt trip or sit in your feelings. The best thing you can do is say, hey, it's a new day. Let's see what I can do today. I think that's the healthiest response we can have. I think that transcends all of this, though. I think that you can you can apply that same yes. concept to any aspect of your life, right? Like, oh, like to I mean, anything. like to take it com completely out of the context of like racial and cultural growth and, and equitable growth mm -hmm. and things like that. Like, we all need to do that right now, and that's a focus, and that's under a magnifying glass. But like, even take it out of the context of I've been eating like crap for a week. Like, are you going to wallow in mm. that or are you going to eat better? Right. Today? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I haven't gotten yes. up and gone for a walk. So I'm going to take 10 minutes and go for a morning walk. My schedule feels mm. crazy and I can't believe. So I'm going to wake up 30 minutes ahead of time and have some self-reflective time or reading time or me mm. time. So like, um, I, I, I love the, like the, the scope of that, right? Like during heavy times, mm. I, and this happens a ton. This is happening for teachers right now. It's happening for the entire country. Honestly, there's a lot of crap going on. We have an entire like uh, racial revolution going on. We have an entire COVID pandemic going on. Schools are shut down. We don't know what the fall looks like. It's never been right. heavier, man. So, right. so, so like, you're right. saying here, the thing I always come back to is, and that you said it perfectly, you can do two things. You can wallow in it and do nothing mm -hmm. and go, Mm -hmm. it, there's so much going on. I, I guess I'm just going to throw my hands up and accept mm -hmm. this is the way things are and I'm going to have to let it just happen to me. Or you control what you can, mm -hmm. you grow where you can, and you get better for tomorrow. Like those are the two choices. And, in, yes. and I know you're the second yes. type of person. I know myself and the Teach Better team, we're that second type of person. But letting people know that it's okay to grow even though you're uncomfortable is really good too. Because you're feeling sad doesn't mean you can't grow. Um, and and, and marking those little incremental growth pieces are so important. Yeah, and and it's and you said it right. These principles literally apply to every life, from being a parent to being a spouse right. to to every intricacy of being a teacher. Right? You're not going to be perfect at everything. You're not going to get it all right. And so the best thing you can do is say, where am I today and how do I get better today? That's the point of a mastery chat. That's the point of teach better, right? That you can mm -hmm. be a better teacher tomorrow than you were today, but you have to know where you're starting. And so I don't yeah. think that, that I'm actually a drug counselor, right? And so I'm with people from yeah. all walks of life. And one thing that I always say is if every person who was in the mastery class today could go to our recovery classes and they would get something out of them because recovery skills are life skills. So racial recovery skills are just life skills. It's just saying, what have I got right? Yeah. What have I got wrong? How can I grow today? And I think that, that a lot of people have that mindset and I hope it keeps going. Yeah. And I, I think you hit on a, a point that I don't think anyone's actually... I don't think anyone's really made that connection as clear as you just did about how the fact that like people have more time to do this work and reflection than mm -hmm. they ever have before. Right. I mean, um, mm -hmm. yes. and, 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 and you even talked about it in the chat tonight, talking about how um, people's perspective on race in like the current situation is different now than it might've been before. Like this moment, feels mm -hmm. different, I think, to a lot of people. I think that has a part of it. Um, and I know for me, when I responded to that question, and I, I, I heard a lot of great responses, but one of the things I talked to Dr. Shemaine Bertrand um, a couple of weeks ago after mm -hmm. uh, one of our mastery mm -hmm. chats, and one of the things she said that just like punched me in the gut in the best way possible was like, you need to be 
be able to put your white privilege on the line. Like this isn't the time to just like mm-hmm. read a book and grow a little <laughs> bit. This isn't the time. I'm going to be honest. Time. I took a sneak peek at that. Yes, I agreed. I was like, <laughs> say it. But <laughs> and, yeah, but like, but no, no joke, man. And it, like, it was like the mm-hmm. best sort of wake up call to me. Cause it's like, listen, like, um, you know, the black community has been having this fight on their own for the last 400 years, essentially. Right. Well, since the inception of this country and, mm-hmm. and like myself as a white male, I've been sitting here going, yeah, that's really sad. I, I can't believe that, you know, and like, I, but like, have I laced up and walked next to, to people? Have I raised my voice? Mm. Have I put my mm. privilege on the line? And like mm. right now, that is the least amount I need to do, right? Like that's kind of how I right. see it. And if you're not doing that, yeah, if you're not, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, I saw something on Facebook and it, it was just a little graphic, but it said everything to me. For anybody who hasn't seen this, uh, pretend that I said it and I created it, okay? Um, it that's is totally not fun. white people against black people. Right. This is not what we're talking about. It's everybody right. against racism. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's everybody against, against, against hatred. Everybody against systematic equality. It's not black people against other people. It's we're supposed to be right. fighting together to stop inequality. And so everybody has a role in that. And we can't be the only ones fighting it. It's not just enough for, for the black people to, to champion it. OK, because we can do that. But here's reality. And this is a, this is a hard thing I'm about to say, but it's true. There's not a great way for black people to protest. OK, right. we can kneel. They're like, mm, don't do it that way. We can march peacefully. Don't do yeah. it that way. We can march and throw things. Don't do it that way. We can type stuff on Instagram or Twitter and people say, I wish you guys would stop bringing this stuff up. There's not really a way that we can bring things and bring awareness that doesn't offend someone. And so the reality is that everybody together has to be talking. So now it's no longer taboo and it's not a yes. secret. And it's, it, it, we, that's how you solve things is you, you call a spade a spade. You say, what are we really discussing here? And, and I think that what you said is so right that Chad, when you, someone like you speaks, Right. When you someone like Jeff Gargas speaks, when when sure. someone like like all those people that I saw talking today, when they go back to their classrooms and they stand up for their students and they learn about them and they grow with them. That's how we change things moving forward. It's it, it's it's more complicated than that, but that's sure. absolutely a, a huge part of it. Yeah, because when we all stand up for the betterment of one subset of the population, it's actually better for all of us. And it doesn't need to mm-hmm. be like what's better for this subset of the population doesn't also help us, right? Because when when right. us when, when we when when one subgroup gets a better way of life or more equity in the world, like we all benefit from that. Um, mm-hmm. And it, I, I I absolutely a thousand. A thousand percent agree. I love the fact that I love the fact that you reference like no way of protesting is acceptable, right? Like no matter what, no, no matter what the community does, you, you have to deal with backlash from it. You do it peacefully, you get you you get yelled at. You kneel, you're unpatriotic. You throw things, I can't believe they're destroying whatever. It, it's like there's no right answer. But when we all do that, it's a different. Mm-hmm it's an entirely different conversation because now it's everyone against racism. It's everyone yes. against hate. Right. Um, and, yes. and when you yes. make that the message. So one thing I was thinking about while you were saying that is I believe there was a riot um, that actually started our country called the Boston tea party. And I was actually <laughs> thinking about this <laughs> the other day. I was like, so there's a bunch of white guys in colonial, uh, you know, the 13 colonies literally destroying, vandalizing, and throwing all of this property, destroying small businesses and larger businesses. Like that was literally what our country was founded on, right? And I was just thinking right. of the duality right. for and, and the complete hypocrisy for us to go, I can't believe they're doing like physical or violent protests and destroying things. 
That was literally how change has occurred in every instance of human history. But for some reason now, mm. it's completely unfounded. And that, that was like a weird connection right. that I was I was like kind of like reflecting on. Like that's hypocrisy at its finest right there, right? Like it's only it's okay well, if we and, get and it, I, but <laughs> Well, and I and I'll say this: my I don't I don't want anybody to think my statement was saying like it's a good thing for for the looting and van and no, burning no, down no, the city. I mean, good. that's never a good thing, right? Of course. So not. I just of want to make sure not. that nobody walks away with with thinking that. But Thanks here's here's reality. <laughs> oh yes, because somebody could walk away like, oh my god. Um, here's a huge thing: everybody today when. Not when you go on your Twitter, your Facebook, and and something happens, you see a whole lot of people quoting Dr. Martin Luther King. Okay, go back to the 1960s and read articles. They did polls back then, and everybody there was so many people back then who thought that their that their protests were unnecessary, uncalled for. They weren't. That there should have been a different way that they approached things. But we look at the history of it and we see how appropriate those things were. And so it's just important for us to understand, again, if we don't talk about the protests at all, if you just talk about me as a black man going to my Facebook and posting something about what I think about racial inequality, I'm telling you right now, there are people who are my Facebook friends who get offended and say, why do we have to keep talking about race? Why is race an issue? They will post some random uh, quote that they see from a famous celebrity that says, well, I don't think we should talk about race. Ah, there's the proof. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is not the proof. That's the proof. That's that person's opinion. The reality is that we have a country in some turmoil that we need to solve. And so it is just appropriate to understand that no matter how you feel about any form of protest or whatever types of protest we're discussing, at the end of the day, people have to be uncomfortable to see that there's a problem. And usually when you don't get uncomfortable, when when you don't when you don't have a reason to look at something differently, you never will. That's a harsh reality, but a reality. For sure, man. For sure. Well, I'm, I I don't want to keep you all night, so I want to start kind of wrapping this up. But obviously, before we end this conversation, um, I could literally listen to you talk all night. And if you want Maurice to talk, he is a part of the Teach Better Speakers Network, so you can actually bring him to your school business wherever you want. Um, and he will, he would love to share that message with you guys, but, um, I would. or, or messages that have nothing to do with this topic. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He has a wealth of knowledge beyond this topic. Believe me. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and a uh, messages that resonate with school, school age kids throughout the entire country. Um, but mm -hmm. in terms of this topic, um, in terms of this conversation, um, as we kind of close this out, what would be kind of like your parting message? So as, as, as people are going to bed tonight, as they're kind of reflecting mm -hmm. on how the chat went, maybe they're listening to this or they're scrolling through this Twitter chat. What's one thing, because what, what I would, what I never want people to do is go, oh my gosh, how do I fix all this tomorrow? Right? Like, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and we talk mm -hmm. a, a lot about that. So like, what are some mm -hmm. like productive steps, Right that you think someone could take tomorrow, next week, over the summer to better prepare themselves to be more culturally responsive, to be more aware and to kind of move the needle in the right direction? What are some like first steps that they can chew on or think about, or just a message that they can take home that you want them to leave with? Mm -hmm. Great question. So I would I would start with kind of a big statement and then I'll, I'll drill it down. Um, don't try so, to change the situation. Work on changing. you. That's where it starts. Right. So the more you can just grow in knowledge. There was a lot of people saying, you know, I'm reading books. I know Teach Better literally just put out a huge list of, of sites you can go to, books that you can get, read, resources that you can obtain. Right. And so start with with trying to understand what you don't know and just moving slow reading books watching documentaries having healthy conversations with people that you know it starts with you and so as the more that you become informed and aware and healthy that the thing because right now let's be honest some people are overwhelmed angry stressed frustrated scared there's so many emotions we're feeling and so if I'm unhealthy 
and I'm trying to learn things that I don't know, it's going to be very hard for me to affect change. Yeah. The greatest thing I can do is to work on me tomorrow. Say, am I healthy? Am I okay? You start there. Then you say, what is okay? And you, you do little by little incrementally. And once you're in a more healthy place and in a more well-informed place, now I have the ability to be a voice of change for my students, for my administration, for my city, for my state, you name it, right? It starts with you and just figuring out what do I need to do today to be better, stronger, smarter, wiser. I think that it all boils down to that. It's a, it's an individual journey for every person. And if there's a way I can help you, you know, hit me up on Twitter, hit me up online. I, I'd be more than happy to be a help for you um, or for, you know, your uh, people at your school, your other teachers. But yeah, I, I think that that's where it starts, Chad. I really do. Dude, I love that, man. You, you can't help other, you can't pour from an empty vessel, right? Um, there you and, go. And if, and if you're not, and I love, I can totally feel like you help people who are struggling, like, mm. because I feel like mm. that same, that same advice would probably work with um, some of the people that you work with on a daily basis in, in, in at, at your day job. So um, mm. like fill your own bucket before you pour out for others, um, grow yourself, yes. focus on you and how you can be better. Man, I can't top that. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to try, okay? Because um, uh, you are fantastic. Our entire audience is clamoring Thanks, for more and more Reese Martin. Um, and I think we need to talk after this to figure out how to make more and more Reese Martin happen um, in sure. any way we possibly can. Um, Maurice, mm -hmm. I truly appreciate you um, spending some time after this ridiculously busy chat um, tonight. You did a fantastic job. Thank you so much for your time. I'm going to end this broadcast now, but have a, an amazing night, everybody. Maurice, thank you so much for your time. You were absolutely awesome. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you for having me.